Hey guys, in this video we're going to be exploring what's called the Fisher Cube and um, we're going to try to relate it as closely as possible to this 3x3. Three three. Now a lot of times when people do a 3x3 three three, they talk about what's getting a white cross on top. We're going to do something very similar on the Fisher Cube except we normally would call these the centers but on a Fisher Cube we're going to be calling these corner pieces the centers. So whenever we talk about centers on a Fisher cube, we're talking about these pieces. And whenever we're talking about corners, we're actually talking about these pieces. So when we go to solve a Fisher cube, we're just going to solve it like a 3x3 three three with some minor hiccups. Let's get started. So the first step on the Fisher cube is going to be getting the white cross like you would on a 3x3. Three three. So I'm going to leave that 3x3 three three right over here. Uh, we already have one piece and it's a red-blue center. Now notice this piece has red on it, so when we put it up there, we want to make sure it is in the appropriate location. That does look good, red and red. This is a blue side. There's another piece right here, blue. I'm just going to insert that just like we would on a 3x3. Three three. Now the last one. Now, something you're going to notice is when you line these up, they might not necessarily line up like the way they would on this cube. See how the green matches with green, orange and orange, blue and blue, red and red. So what we're going to have to do on this Fisher cube is, notice this one's orange green, but this one doesn't line up. So what we're going to do is, we're going to flip that face around 180, move that edge out of the way. Now notice this was orange green, so we're going to get this in that orientation. Red green, sorry, I am colorblind. You've noticed that from some of the other videos. I've kind of screwed up. We need red green as our famous colorblind moment of the day, I guess. Nobody's perfect. But at least I have an excuse, right? Still doesn't really line up. So what we're going to do to remedy that is we're going to move it out of the way, flip that fella, and put it right back on top. Now it's lined up. I'm going to continue to do that for all these other pieces. Um, this one's not right either. Take my time with it so everyone can see what's going on. This one's not right either. We'll flip that one upside down as well. Now there's obviously other ways to do this that are a little quicker. I'm just trying to give you a nice beginner's tactic. I don't want to take all the fun from you. And this one's not good either. So you got to see a nice little uh, super cube phase where we're fixing center orientation. I like to do this when I do my mirror or bump cube so that the grain of the mirrors is all the same. But now what we have created is we have the white cross on top and we have all of the other centers oriented properly. Now I told you I was really going to take my time here. We're not even going to use advanced F2L pairing. I'll let you do that if you'd like. The next step is going to be getting an entire first layer solved. So we're going to get these corner pieces in. So on a Fisher cube, we said these are actually the corner pieces. What's traditionally the, the edge piece is the corner piece. Now this one's slotted in there perfect. Notice this is the orange side, so we're going to be looking for an orange-white potentially for that one. It's down here. So here's our green. We're just going to slot that guy right down there. And just going to pull that one piece out. There's our orange piece. We're going to place him right in. Now it is good practice to keep him to uh, keep these guys lined up in your head as well. Because as we go on the harder puzzles like the windmill and the axis cube, Lining the centers up uh, can be a daunting task, especially in like an axis cube. But as we slot these guys down, I don't think uh, everyone's going to struggle here. Alright guys, we're making some progress here. So the next step we're going to be taking a look at is finishing up that second layer. Now remember, these right here are, are uh, edge pieces. So we're going to be inserting some edge pieces. Now the edge pieces look like this. They kind of look like centers on the regular Rubik's Cube. 
So see this green one? That green one's got to go right there. Now you can choose to slot it from this side or this side because notice as we turn this fella down, it fits in perfect from there. And it also fits in perfect from here. So however you'd like to insert those four pieces, knock yourself out, get those four pieces in there just like you would on a regular three by three beginner's method. That one's already done for us. That one's already done for us. And now we're going on to this one. Just take your time. If it's the first time you've done this puzzle, it's not a race. Not yet at least, right? All right. So we've completed the first two layers. The next thing we're going to try to do is get a white, uh, sorry, a yellow cross on top, just like we would in beginner's method. So notice we have a single dot. So you can do your method of doing this like you would on a three by three. However you'd like to do it. And you'll have your cross on top. But there is one thing that might happen when you get to this phase. A lot of people are calling it parity, but it is not parity. Let me explain. So on the Fisher cube, you may get a case where you do have an odd number of whites, I'm sorry, yellows on top. And uh, this one, a lot of people are calling it parity, but it's really not considered a parity technically. Um, I'm going to show you an algorithm that will fix it. I'm not going to tell you how it fixes it. I'm going to leave that to you guys in the comments. If no one says it in the comments or discussion, maybe I'll do a giveaway. And if no one's interested in the giveaway, I'll make another video explaining why this works. But what we're going to do is we're going to hold this guy in the front, doing sexy move first. We're on sexy move. We're going to run sexy move again, but instead of bringing it back, we're going to bring it back over to that way one more time. And we're going to rotate the cube with it. And this time we're going to go right side down, top side to the left right side up and now we're going to start fixing it top side over right side down we're going to start fixing that white face back here top to that side paired up and we're going to put the white right to the bottom and you'll notice what that did got us an even number on top and this is a case we know how to fix So some people are calling that parity on a uh, Fisher cube. It's really not parity, but once again, we'll leave it for you guys in the comments to explain why that move works. If over a little bit of time, no one says it, you know, maybe I'll do a giveaway for it. And if the giveaway isn't good enough, I'll just make another video for it. But we're gonna continue finishing this last layer. So just like in beginner's method, the next step is going to be after getting the yellow cross, we're going to orient the white yellow cross and we're going to orient it with soon. If you don't know what soon is, it's where you turn it up, kick the top over, turn it down, turn the top over, turn it back up, hit the top twice, turn it back down, and then you can reorient from there. Now I have a pretty bad case where I have opposites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch these two first, then switch these two. So you soon. You soon again to get it here. two adjacents and I'll just swap those two. Yeah, swap those two. So now I have an oriented cross on top. And 
And now we're going to get these edge pieces, which are really corners oriented. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the red blue is in the red blue slot. It doesn't need to be yellow up right now. Same with this one, orange, blue, green, orange, red, green. So are any of them in the right slot? The answer is no, none of them. Now I'm going to use my preferred algorithm, which cycles three of them clockwise or counterclockwise from beginner's method. It's again, oh, someone setting off some fireworks. Maybe you'll get to hear my dog barking if you're lucky. Now this one's in the right spot. It's going to cycle those three. I don't know why someone would be setting off fireworks uh, June 9th. really don't understand that. I guess that's what happens when you make fireworks legal in New Jersey. You get people shooting off fireworks for absolutely no reason. But now they are all in the correct orientation. I'm sorry, they're all in the correct slot. They're not oriented properly. We're just going to have to fix those too. So the last step is going to be our beginner's method finish here. Uh, we're just going to keep running that upside down sexy move with this until we get yellow on top. Down, over. Up, over, down, over, up, over, still not on top, down, over, up, over, down, over, up, and over. We have yellow on top, we're going to re-slot the next one, down, over, up, over, and we're just going to keep running it. It should be in on this move. Uh, that one's done, that one's done, that one's done. Now we're just going to reorient the bottom. We have solved the Fisher cube and we've talked about the more difficult cases of it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Once again, if you have an answer to why that parody... Parody... <laughs> algorithm uh, does solve the case where this is sticking straight up, uh, leave it below. If no one leaves it below, maybe I'll try to incentivize you guys by leaving a uh, you know, giveaway for it. And if no one does it after that, maybe I'll make a video for you. But have a good night, guys. Hope you enjoy the video.